Hello, all the crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to Making Bullet Hell Games and Game Maker. So, last time I've uh, begun the uh, the fun process of actually replacing the programmer art in this game with actual like, well, it's still it still isn't amazing, but it's it's not programmer art at the very least. It looks like what it's supposed to look like, sort of. And today I'm going to uh, continue doing that. So I've got a couple other foes that I want to design, as many as I can get through in a in a reasonable amount of time, probably. 40 minutes or so, I'll cut it off. Um, flies, Natch, Midges, whatever. Uh, these guys, in Bombardier, I gave them a, a damage shield so that the first hit that you apply to them, as well as some certain status effects, won't affect them. And I'm probably going to do the same thing here. Um, oh, you know what I didn't do is, uh, that I wanted to do? What did I write down? I didn't write down anything for, like, the HP levels of, of these guys. I feel like overall balance in the game is something that I'm going to spend a lot more time on later. Of course it's going to be something I spend a lot more time on later, but um, I feel like it's not really worth trying to fine-tune their HP values right now anyway. But yeah, um, that just came to mind when I saw this uh, low HP but damage shield thing. And honestly, in the context of this game, what even would the damage shield be besides just another hit point or so? So I might just completely disregard that. So, let's see. These guys were chasing you down, right? I said that. So Entity Foe Template Chase. I can duplicate this to Entity Foe um, Nat. Nats, Flies, Midges, whatever you want to call them. Pretty sure Midges are just Nats. Um, that some people call different things, but hey, whatever. Let's see, I can, uh, once again, give you your, your visible models. Uh, I will make you animate slightly faster, I think. Let's give you six frames of animation per second. And when it comes to the, uh, these guys, um, I will... Why does this room editor always start, like, zoomed out like this? It's honestly really annoying. Um, I'll just populate my test level with those guys, and we can see what they're like. Oh, before I even, before I even think about it. Uh, let me look at the variable definitions. Let's see. Point values, movement speed. I feel like I should make these guys a little bit faster. I'll see how fast that ends up being later. Uh, their HP value, health max. I will cut that down. Let's cut that in half. Um, oh, you know what the point of the, the damage shield was? Uh, in, like, here, as in Bombardier, is in case you were to fire a shot that would take these guys down in one hit, um, they would, uh... That's a pretty reasonable chasing velocity, I think. Let me try that again, keeping them alive for a little longer. Um, even, even if you were to hit them with something that would take them down in one hit, they would, uh, they would still take two hits to take down, no matter how powerful your attacks are. All right. And I feel like I should, like, implement flocking behavior because they are sort of all converging. Um, hmm. That's not something I've set up the code to do. And it now looks like there's about six of them. Or it now looks like there's one of them, but... They're all in the same place, but I probably, uh, probably should. I will write that down. Um, do I have, like, a... No, that's literally, like, outside of game stuff. Do I have a... I guess there's always the backlog. What's on the backlog? Alright, so can I put a, uh... uh I will do that at an un... Um... It's not a bug. I won't mark it as a bug. I will do that at an unspecified later date. Um, if there's time, I might do that at the end of the video after I get through, like, grasshoppers. Uh, but I, uh, I don't want to do it now. I want to get through the, um, I want to get through these designs as quickly as possible. Oh, I, what I will do, though, is, uh, damage shield, damage shield values. Can I, uh, can I go to Entity Foe Template and... Uh, I will define the damage shield and just the, the default foe, and by default it'll be zero, and uh, let's see, is there an on hit, on damage? 
if self dot uh, damage shield is greater than zero, we will ignore taking damage. Uh, we'll probably play like a sound effect or make them flash or something. Uh, but we can also say self dot damage shield minus minus and. I should probably also draw something over them, like uh, the way the player is going to have like a bubble in front of them. Um, I should also uh, draw something around the foe so that the, it's clear that there is a damage shield happening there as well. All right. Uh, if I go back to, to you over here, um, damage shield, I will edit this to, let's give you two points of shield, but like, only, only four max HP or so. All right, again, effectively it does just look like more HP, but if the player buffs their attack or something like that, it will become obvious exactly how that works and how the shield works. And again, we can tweak the numbers later. Um, implemented nets. And uh, I already uh, officially finished them, even though I kind of didn't. Uh, bagworms, high HP. They will explode if you don't take them out fast enough. Okay, that should be fun. That's going to be a little different. Are there any... Uh, you are also going to explode on death. Are there any that are not going to do that? Scarab beetle shoot, shoots bullets in a ring. I'll do that first, uh, because that should be fast. So radial and foe scarab is going to shoot in a radial pattern. All right, um, let's see, once again, I'm going to need to give you the visible model. Uh, let's have a look at your variable definitions. Let's see, I feel like you're gonna have a little more HP. Let's give you 20 or so. And, hmm, do I want, Like, shoot a little faster, uh, your bullets will move slower, but there will be... How many shots do you do? Okay, so number of shots. This really should be... This really should be its own variable definition. Shot... Shot density can default to... I'll make it 16. I want these guys to be a little more intimidating. Um, Self.shot density. And we'll also do that to the uh, the radial template. This feels like the sort of thing I, I would have done. I would have made a variable definition earlier. Maybe I just forgot. I don't remember what I was thinking. If I go back and watch the video where I wrote this, it was pro it, w it would probably be something like, something dumb like who who needs to make this a instance variable. It's, it's never gonna change. I can just leave it in the code like this, but um, let's see. Oh, oh no, I was going to say, do, do I like, if I do this, will it set the instance type to all these objects? But no, it won't. Um, I have to actually bring my cursor over the, over the, uh, the button for that to happen. All right, whatever. Okay, that's definitely, okay, that might be... This is getting to what I said with regards to like, I'm not good at bullet hell and that's probably gonna end badly. And this is probably gonna end badly for me if I make it too hard. So I will, shots per second can be like 0 0.25. We can only shoot every four seconds. And I might think about making the density, like making the, the bullet speed even slower. Uh, shot velocity can be like 120. The density is pretty high. I think I'm satisfied with how um, how dense the bullets are, but all right. Like if I wanted to, if I wanted to implement difficulty, I would probably add a modifier to everything's like attack speed or bullet density or something like that. But um, 
again, stealing stealing ideas from a uh, Koopa Matt's Bullet Heaven games. Um, if I did that, I would definitely need to get someone who's better at video games to test that for me. I'll also bump your health up even more. I want these guys to be a little tanky. I want the Skyros to be a little tanky. I mean, like, if you look at them, they're, they're kind of beefy bugs, you know? So you wouldn't think they would just go down in just a few hits. All right. Well, they'll, uh, they'll be a bit of a later game, later game enemy, and um, maybe by then the player will have upgraded their other damage a little bit. All right, Skyrabs, shoot bullets in a ring. That's fine. We're finished with that. Let's see. Bagworms, I said we're going to explode. I want to give those a little bit more attention later. Uh, pill bugs, uh, same thing, but in a different, uh, under a different circumstance. Uh, grasshoppers. All right. Dense bullets in a spiral. I'm thinking grasshoppers are going to get similar spec, similar specs, uh, entity post spiral. Grasshoppers are going to get similar specs to the scarabs in terms of like the rate of fire and that sort of thing. But I, um, I'll obviously have them shooting like this instead of, um, just in a ring. Let's see. Uh, okay. I'll have to jog my memory to think about how, like, what kind of a pace this is going to run at. Um, shots per second, 15. Okay, that's right. You're going to be moving pretty fast, I think. Shot velocity, again, it might not hurt to lower that a little bit. And I guess we can start with that. All right. So Entity Foe Grasshopper. Let us drag you into wave one for testing purposes. And... Okay, that is a spiral. Um, that's a little bit, a little bit crazy, especially considering like the size of my hitbox and the aforementioned not being good at video games. That might be a little bit much to have on screen at once. Can I just like temporarily disable these guys? I might have a swarm of uh, I might have a swarm of scarabs on screen at once, but I don't think I'll, I'll probably have as many grasshoppers because they're a bit of a bigger, bigger model. Hmm. Like, this could be, like, the lead-up to a boss or something, since these guys were sort of the bosses of the, uh, a bombardier. All right. That's close enough that I won't, um... I won't try to fine-tune it now. Oh, what I will do, though, is, uh, what's the health max? Give him a bit more HP. All right, how long have I been recording for? I've been going for 14 minutes. Um, all right. So grasshoppers can go over here. I might, um, hmm, I'm thinking if I have like a, a mini boss or something, it'll probably be either the scarabs or the grasshoppers or the hornets. I think I, uh, I think I established that I want those to be a little on the mean side. Oh, scorpions. Those are like the melee attackers. Sort of, or at least like, they're still gonna shoot at you, but they're not gonna do it unless you get close. So that's kind of as close as a bullet hell is gonna get to a melee attack anyway. Um, let's see, I can't do these last three today because I don't have 3D objects um, ready for them because I'm recording this right after the uh, last week's video. Bagworms, high HP, explode if you don't take them out fast enough. Okay, so that's going to piggyback off of info template explode. Let's see, number of shots. This is also going to be want, this is also going to want to be like, uh, what was it? Bullet density or something, shot density. So I can... I can do this. Um, hmm... This is going to shoot off bullets in random directions, so you may get lucky, you may not. And... Let 
we are going to we are going to give you the bagworm bagworm model and let's see this one was if you don't take them out fast enough right yeah if you don't take them out fast enough so this is just going to be like on a timer in that case, like, the time until the first shot is going to be how long they live, so I should probably make that a little long. Um, shot cooldown, shots per second. What is shot cooldown used for? That's, like... That's only used for the player. Why do enemies have this? You don't need that. I mean, enemies have it because it's all defined in like the base entity class, but like, why was the why was um why are the enemies overriding it? All right, whatever. So the shots per second value can be like something like 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1 rather. Uh, that'll make it one shot per ten seconds. So if you don't take these guys out in ten seconds, they'll explode. And it's still called template bagworm. I'm just going to idle for about 10 seconds. And they're either going to come in and shoot once. Okay, so they probably should not should not do that. Um, your shots per second value. Uh, your, your shot cooldown starts off at zero when you spawn in, so you will shoot immediately. And I don't really know if I want that, so I think instead... Hmm... Time to live can be 10 seconds. I can... Inherit this. Uh, self dot shoot will just be an empty method, and then on top of everything else. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. St I have a feeling. What did I inherit? Draw. I'm still gonna need all this. Because even if I kick out of the uh, the inherited event earlier, I will still have to keep mine. So override, and if self dot can shoot, we're gonna self dot shoot, or we can say self dot time to live minus equals dt. Uh, if self dot time to live is less than or equal to zero, self dot die, and. That should be a little bit more straightforward than hijacking the, uh, than hijacking the shooting mechanism. So these guys are effectively going to be bombs. Oh, are they, are they still shooting? I don't want them to still shoot. All right. Bagworm shouldn't have a... Oh, the reason it's, it, the reason it's calling the, um... The shoot code is because that's happening in the inherited event. Okay, I was gonna say, did I like when I was demoing time sources earlier? Did I just have everything that was an enemy just like fire and forget? But all right. So we have these ugly things, and after about ten seconds, they're gonna go up in flames. I'd like the density to be higher, actually. I like the. Uh, Shot density can be like 24. I like, I like the consequences of letting them all blow up at the same time to be a little more dire. If you can, if you can kill them earlier, uh, that would be preferable. They'll still blow up in a, in a rather violent manner, but they will, um, they will not all go out at, at the same time, which would be pain. That's still, wow, when I'm all the way over here, that's still not that dense. Let's go. 
Let's go way insane. Let's create 40 bullets. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and I was off by a second, but that's all right. I like that bullet density better. And if I were to actually like shoot at them, obviously they would still explode then, right? Because the the explosion behavior is happening in the, in the dying method. Yeah, all right. Uh, did I specify that I want you to have IHP? Also, I did. So we can give you guys, and I haven't touched like the point value of anything, but we can give you guys like 25 HP. Or something like that. Alright, this feels reasonable. Obviously, I'd want, like, in the final game, the time to live to be more like 30 seconds or so. Um, or at least like 20. To give the player a reasonable chance at taking them all out. But... All right, it's a start. Again, balance is a thing that we're doing once I've, probably once I've implemented all the foes, and I'll probably do more balanced things once I've um, implemented all the player buffs and that sort of thing, player progression. All right, pill bugs, high HP explode on death. Um, I think I'm going to have this be a cross between ent foe template chase, and that they're going to chase you down, and ent foe template explode. So ent foe... Pillbug. Actually, you know what? Um, I'll control D duplicate the bagworm for this, and uh, the chasing enemies. How is this implemented? Okay, so we take a target, which is the player, and then we just walk towards it. Simple enough. Uh, do we have any? Uh, we have a movement speed that we're going to need to define for this to work, which is currently 180. Um, instead of instead of doing the time to live shenanigans here, uh, this can be movement speed, and I'll, and I'll make this like one. I'll make this 100. I don't want them to move fast. Probably gonna have like a bunch of pill bugs spawning at the same time and moving towards you. And then of course when they die they will, you know, do this. Uh, what is the shot density? I will not make this as high. I'll make this... Maybe I'll make it... Tw Maybe I'll uh, drop it down to 12 because I foresee a lot of these being on screen at once. And they will be chasing you down, which means that on average they will die closer to you than the other things will. And... Um, that could be that could potentially become unpleasant. Pill bugs, pill bugs, pill bugs, and pill bugs. This is the fun part of game design. I mean, I think a lot of it's the fun part. All right, so you guys are gonna home in on me. I do want you to. All right, one, you're gonna have the same the same issue with uh, flocking as the uh, the gnats did, but two, I also want you to like turn towards the direction you're moving. All right. Um, they're facing downward, which is direction 270 in Game Maker and generally on computer screens. And I'm going to probably have to... Since that's like the default direction, we're going to have to like cheat a little bit to make them... to make them do that. Uh, let's see... Pillbug, I can give you a uh, property that's self dot. Actually, you know what direction exists. I can. That's already going to be defined because it's a built-in. But I can um, I can just use direction for this. Direction is probably the the one built-in instance variable that I'm on the least aside from the the visual stuff like sprite Im sprite index and image index because uh, direction on itself won't do anything if um your speed values are not set. So I don't mind using direction for things, even though it's a built-in. Uh, let's see. Self dot direction is going to equal uh, point. Uh, we can say direction to target start off, and in the draw event, um, 
I'm gonna do something similar here, but instead of a Z rotation of zero, we can rotate with, with a Z rotation of self dot direction. And uh, yeah, you guys are gonna be, I'm gonna need to do like direction plus 90 or so. Uh, direction equals this plus 90. And leave a note for myself so that I remember why I did that. You know what I kind of kind of want to do? All right, yeah, they are they are creeping towards me, which is not super nice. And they definitely are going to need some sort of flocking behavior. All right. So when they when they die, they will explode, and it's not an un unmanageable amount of bullets, but hmm, should I have them like only ever move down to like the the top three quarters of the screen? Should I like have the bottom of the screen be a safe zone so that they can't ever be behind the player because the player can't shoot behind themselves? Um. And you'll have to then guide them up to the top of the screen, which could be a pain. And the next wave spawned in. Go away, you. All right. Also, by the way. When they first came in. The ones on the top, can I like do that again? I can I can quit to the menu and restart the level instead of having to restart the game. Um, the ones at the top of the screen are pointing direction equals 180. Why is that? Oh, is that because of the path? Does that autom automatically get set like get set like by the path? That's an argument in favor of using my own direction value. All right, so foiled once again by built-ins. If I use my own variable here, our uh, our built-in instance direction will not be. There we go. Our built-in instance direction will not be uh, set to that of of whatever the path is is moving in. Okay, next. Let's see, they explode. I did say, let's say I can strain them to the top, like, half of the screen, top two-thirds of the screen, something like that. Uh, oh, I did not commit changes to the several things. Let me disentangle this. All right, so we've gotten in, we've gotten and implemented ourselves some, some new bugs. Uh, let's see. I, before I, uh, before I knock anything off on Hack and Plan, okay, fine, I'll just do this now. Um, I am going to go and do the thing where homing enemies will not cross below, um, below a certain threshold. And a naive way of doing that would be, um, self.y is going to equal the min of self.y and room height times three divided by four, or maybe two thirds, maybe would be more reasonable. Um... And this would prevent them from going down below the, the two-thirds mark on the screen. So if I just hang out down here, that's, that's as low as you'll go. Is that like... Would that be a, a good game design decision? Allow the player... I, I don't know. Hmm, maybe that'll be like a difficulty thing. On easy mode, uh, the foes will, will stop here. Uh, the foes will constrain themselves here, but on hard mode, they won't. I guess I'll leave it up to democracy. Whoever's watching this, if you think constraining the vertical position of homing enemies would be a good thing to do, uh, let me know. I will leave this in the code, but I'll have it commented out. Um... 
I may throw it on the backlog as an item to revisit for difficulty settings. Let's see, Nats were the other one that did this. And I will need the step event here. Uh, let me know what you think the default should be, I guess. And I'm going to uh, say chasing enemies may or may not All right, we will, um, we'll go with that for now. Let's see, I've been recording for 35 minutes. Um, I think that is probably good enough. I will not, um, I will not do what I said, uh, the, earlier in the video with regards to this. I will leave that as a backlog item. Let's see. Yeah, these are other things that I'm going to need to take care of before the game ships, but I don't know when I want to, when I want to make them happen. So, all right, that's fine. Next. Hmm. I'll put the rest of the photo types on screen right now, on the in progress for now, so that I, I will attempt to get to them all next time. Uh, no guarantees that I'll be able to like finish three enemies, three regular enemies, which are um, gaining complex complexity and two bosses in the next video. But I'll see if I can. Uh, now that I've worked out a, a system, hopefully it will flow a little bit more easily uh, and a little bit more quickly. This is what the progress board looks like now. 28% uh, of work items for Sprint 3, the gameplay content, and 26% uh, of the points. So we're getting there. Uh, the project dashboard overall looks like this. I don't think I've actually shown this off uh, much recently. So we're, uh, we're a solid 60% of the way there, I think. Almost 60% of the way there. Uh, which for, uh, well, what is this, week 23, I think is pretty good. What was still on gameplay UI? Oh yeah, upgrades and collectibles. By the way, fun fact, I, um, I mentioned when I did the translation system that it was based on the translation system that I threw into Bombardier, and I actually ended up liking this, this one for this game more than the one that I had in Bombardier. Uh, that was, a uh, JSON-based for containing all the text, and I, um, basically rewrote it to look a lot more like this one. Uh, so that you could just use an Excel spreadsheet because that would be much easier for just to like send to people and um, insert text for Insert the translated text, but uh, that's a bit of a fun fact I'll probably at least save parts of it for future games even if it's if it's not the uh, only translation system because um, A couple of the things I want to do in the future after this will involve more text than these games are anyway uh, I'm going to end this off here. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository in the video description. Uh, this is going to be week 23. I try to post about two game dev videos a week. One, let's make a game like this, and one tutorial tutorial. So if you're interested in anything like that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, uh, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I hope you all found this interesting, and I will see you all later. You know, I think the uh, I think the project dashboard is uh, feels feels like a bigger dopamine hit when you look at it because it feels like you're getting more done. Because you can see the a bit more of the breakdown. I'm gonna do that. I'm coming to like hack and plan. I'm sure I'll be using it again. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt. Game Maker, Gunnar Clovis, KeyXE, Syndra Larson, Square Crow, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to support this channel yourself, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.